Seems like there's only like two positions to take these days. Um, either you believe the sort of Sidney Powell uh, Dominion voting system conspiracy theory, at this point, something that she even says no rational person could have possibly believed. I did not believe that. Uh, and I've told you that since the beginning. Or you have to be the crazy left person who goes so far and any sort of measure to uh, make sure an election is, I don't know, somewhat secure, that's terrible. It's racism. It's violence. And I'm not kidding you. This is the headline. This is Rolling Stone today. Voter suppression is violence. <laughs> Georgia's barbaric new restrictions not only ban giving food and water to voters in line, but also build upon the Trump election lies that have already cost lives. So let's look at what kind of violence we're talking about. ABC News has uh, done an article. They're breaking down the bill piece by piece by piece by piece. And I will say this, a quick warning for you. Voter suppression is violence. So this is extremely violent content. What would this bill really do? Quote, the bill would expand early voting for primary and general elections, but not for runoffs. Wow, expanding voting and pr for primary and general elections, I will tell you, that's violence, okay? Remember, adding early voting on for two elections, but keeping it the same for the third kind of election is clear, violent voter suppression. How about early voting on weekends? Quote, for primaries and general elections, counties would be required to have advanced voting on both Saturdays and have the option to do it on the two Sundays that fall in the three-week period, too. Current law only mandates one Saturday of early voting. So Georgia went from one Saturday of early voting to two Saturdays and also expanded it to two optional Sundays. That's violence. Remember, going from one day of weekend voting to two and as many as four is violent voter suppression. How about those ballot drop boxes? Quote, Secure ballot drop boxes are not explicitly sanctioned under current state law, and this bill would change that, but it would also implement new restrictions on their use compared to what voters experienced in the 2020 cycle. Unless there's a health emergency, drop boxes could only be inside advanced voting locations and only accessible when those locations are open. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, that's violence. Taking something like ballot drop, drop boxes uh, that were, by the way, previously not sanctioned under the law and codifying them in the law with the minor safety measure of, you know, not leaving them outside unattended 24 hours a day. Well, that's clear violent voter suppression. But that's not all the violence, I have to admit. The bill will, quote, require voters to provide their driver's license or state ID number or a photocopy of another accepted identification if the elector lacks those. That, my friends, is violence. Asking a minority for an ID is not only clearly violent voter suppression, it is racist violent voter suppression. Ask yourself this, how could someone who isn't white get identification? It's impossible. It can't be done. And the state of Georgia, of course, knows that it's impossible. And that's why they're passing this law. Let's let the completely unbiased people over at the New York Times flagship podcast, The Daily, explain all of this violent racism to us. One big change is that an ID is now required. Basically, oh. anyone who wants to request an absentee ballot will need to show a driver's license or a state ID number what? instead of just doing a signature, which was then matched on, on a file and oh created a host of issues. Mm -hmm. So Republicans argued that bringing in these IDs made it both secure and a little easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, civil rights groups will point that anytime you add an ID requirement to voting, it normally disproportionately impacts communities of color and poorer communities. So mm -hmm. therefore introducing identification requirements, make it harder for them to vote. Okay, got it. Got it? I got it. Do you got it? Got it. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. I got it. You got it. We all got it. That's violent violence, isn't it? Hmm. 
Oddly, though, voter ID is the least controversial controversy in American history. And I mean this sincerely. Voter ID is among the most popular policies in American public discourse. A Gallup poll shows us voter ID uh, is favored overall just by the minor, the, the, the slightest of margins, 80 to 19, 80 percent. That is not a div divisive issue in this country. And it's not just Republicans either. When you break it down by parties, Republicans, yes, 95 percent support. Independents, 83 percent support. Even Democrats, 63% support. 63% of freaking Democrats agree with it. But how about minorities? We know this is, an, is, a, is a thing. We just heard about it. It's targeting minorities. They are disproportionately affected. Whenever you hear that phrasing, you know something's up. And of course, uh, we know that uh, African Americans, uh, Hispanics, Asians, completely incapable of getting a driver's license. However, shockingly, uh, white people favor voter ID laws at, at the clip of 81%, non-whites all the way down at 77%. Voter ID is not a divisive issue anywhere outside of the media. That Gallup poll, by the way, is a few years old, but a more recent poll from Rasmussen Reports found results consistent with Gallup. 75% believe photo identification should be presented before voting, and 69% of black voters supported voter ID. Broken down by party, 60% of Democrats support showing an ID to vote, compared to 89% of Republicans. So a couple points lower on those categories, but basically the same poll uh, several years apart. So maybe minorities, and this could be the thesis here, Maybe minorities are just not aware of how much violent voter suppression they are getting hit with. Is that possible? Uh, no. A joint study from an Italian professor and a professor from Harvard found, quote, using a difference in differences design on a 1.6 billion observations panel data set from 2008 to 2018. We find that the laws have no negative effect on registration or turnout overall or for any group defined by race, gender, age, or party affiliation. But other than that, it's violence. Now, however, I will say this. I haven't even mentioned the most violent thing in this violent voter suppression bill. Get ready, prepare yourself. No person shall solicit votes in any manner or by any means or method, nor shall any person dis distribute or display any campaign material, nor shall any person give offer to give or participate in the giving of any money or gifts, including, but not limited to, here it comes, food and drink to an elector. That, my friends, is violence. They are trying to dehydrate voters to death. Stacey Abrams was right all along. Let's let the New York Times explain this dastardly form of violence to us. So there's been third party groups that will sometimes come and bring food and water to those people who are waiting in line for hours on end in the in the blistering Georgia heat. Hmm. Now, this law would ban those groups oh from bringing food and water no. and other assistance to voters waiting in hours long lines. Nick, that proposal seems very hard to understand as anything other than an attempt to make it harder for certain people to vote. Exactly. And so what? how do the people who proposed that defend it? Mm. There hasn't been that much of a defense, except that they've tried to say, technically, it's just there's a radius of 150 feet that, you know, this ban affects. And so it gets into this kind of technicality. And that's where the mm. defense has been. But the reality is it's going to prevent help, assistance and resources from reaching voters who are waiting in line to vote. <laughs> OK, there's so much to unpack. But let's start here. The blistering Georgia heat. In November? Really? Am I that out of touch with geography? It seems to me that Georgia in November would be quite nice. And we look at the intranets and we find that that's true. Quote, in November, the average high temperature decreases from an agreeable 73.2 degrees Fahrenheit in October to a comfortable 61.3 degrees Fahrenheit. 61 degrees is scorching heat? And I'm sorry, what, it, what is their defense? It's a technicality. That's what he said, a technicality. Let's look at this technicality. 
First of all, it's obviously about giving away gifts like money or food to entice voters to vote, which is arguably already against the law. But does it really aim to dehydrate the public into not voting? The bill specifically states that they can still make available, quote, self-service water from an unattended receptacle to an elector waiting in line to vote. So the people have to walk to get the water themselves. That sounds like violence. And honestly, what if there is not a water station already set up? Then what happens? That's when people are dropping dead in the 60 degrees scorching heat. Well, this bill will still let a third party give you food or water. So think about this. This whole thing, this whole international controversy about not giving water, they could give you water at the polls, okay, but a third party couldn't do it unless, of course, they're not within 150 feet of the outer edge of any building within which a polling place is established, within a polling place, can't do it inside, or within 25 feet of any voter standing in line to vote at any polling place. That's the technicality those dastardly Republicans keep arguing about. You may have to walk 25 feet to get your water, or as much as 150 feet to get your water. Can you imagine the gall of these bastards? Violence! Is there any possibility of this changing? One single vote. Who is this person? Look, I was waiting in line for an hour, but then I thought, you know, I'm parched. But I mean, to get water, I have to walk nine yards in that direction. Damn you, Georgia, I shall not vote. Violence. This is completely out of control. The media is calling this law and others like it Jim Crow 2.0. This is an embarrassing misuse of history and demeans the actual struggles people went through during the civil rights era. I don't mean to go all Game of Thrones on you, but if asking for voter ID and securing voter locations is violence, then I choose violence.